Kevin Hassan with us right now, the former Council of Economic Advisors chairman under President Bush, author of The Drift. Kevin, I, knowing that you were coming, I always look forward to those moments. I wanted to get your reaction to what your former boss had to say in the CNN interview last week, in which he characterized the Republicans' fight to rein in spending cups tied to the debt ceiling as a good one, and that um, if it means default, default. Uh, what did you make of that? Well, I think that as a negotiator, you've got to be willing to say, look, I'm really serious about this. And of course, nobody wants default. Uh, the fact, though, is that, that I felt a little bit uh, this morning like Bill Murray in Caddyshack. You know, I had my ear to the ground trying to ah. find the gophers. And I think I have pretty good intel that they've been making a lot of progress at the staff level. And it's also one of those things that Bob mentioned a minute ago, that, that in Washington, you always sort of hear about what's going on. But then all of a sudden, when it's silent, it means actually they're getting pretty close. I've heard that the, they've been having very productive staff meetings, that they're down to the level of picking like senior staff to go to present to the principals a deal that they think ought to be attractive to everybody, and that there's a chance that such a deal could happen relatively quickly. And if it does, I think that's really good news, provided that they do make some progress on the on the spending cuts, because you know this is going to be the first year where interest payments on the debt are bigger than defense spending in the U.S. Incredible. And so we've really got to start to get ahead of the curve on that. And if we don't, then we'll be headed for a default down the road. Do you think back to what President Trump was saying then, Kevin, that this was sort of a way to... Uh, you know, either force Republicans' hands or, or to, to push them to make a deal, that, that he, he wasn't advocating default. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And, and there's been a deal around the debt limit increase a million times. It's yeah. just sort of how Washington works. It's something that has to happen. And because it has to happen, then eventually there's a bill, and almost always the bill has policy associated with it in addition to the debt. But, you know, we keep doing this, and the bigger the numbers get, you know, it, it doesn't take long before all of a sudden you're at another, you know, case of brinksmanship here. There's got to be a better way to do this. Yeah, and for sure, you had mentioned earlier, uh, looking around the world, there are a lot of countries that have, you know, s statutory constitutional limits on how much debt can be relative to GDP or how much spending can be relative to GDP. And there's a big academic literature that shows that those rules, even though they can be overridden by a simple majority in Parliament or Congress, that they actually have a pretty big effect on what happens in those countries. And so I think that in the U.S., we really do need to seriously have some kind of budget commission. I, I noticed, uh, I see down in the corner that Mitch Daniels is coming up soon. Yes. You know, I would, I would pick him to run it, <laughs> for goodness sakes. You know, the blade sure does know how to cut spending. But right now, the U.S. is on a path that's unsustainable. And an easy way to get to a sustainable path is to just copy most every other country. You know, most European countries have some kind of caps. Yeah, uh, I think we're on the debt. only you know, right ones. Now, I think debt us, to ourselves and Denmark are the only ones that have a system like this. Anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. But let me get your right. take on um, what would happen if we were downgraded. I mean, but let's say we avoid, you know, the, 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 the worst case of default. But we did that back in 2011, and, and, and we were still downgraded by s and I'm just wondering, because there are rumors of something like that afoot. What do you think would be the fallout? Right. You, you know, that that when I was in the White House, one of the jobs of the CEA is to meet with the guys who do the bond rating for the U.S. And one of the sort of gamesmanship uh, plays that I made back then is I took one of my most junior guys and had that person represent the CEA with the bond raters because I wanted to signal that I'm not concerned at all. Right. If I show up with with a 100 page PowerPoint, then I'm nervous and maybe they, they get nervous. Right now, if I were the CEA chair, I'd show up to the meeting. And the reason is not just because of the debt limit increase, uh, but also because interest rates have gone up so much and debt has continued to rise. So the interest payments uh, on our debt and as a share of GDP are just frankly unsustainable. And so if you consider that the U.S.'s debt to GDP is about 40 percent higher than it is for Argentina, then you should be concerned about a downgrade. It's a legitimate concern. And I think that you know, the good news is that it looks like the Democrats and Republicans are pretty serious about this deal. The deal will include some progress on spending. And if that happens, then maybe that'll give us bias some time with, with the uh, bond raters. But but honest to goodness, if we if we don't do anything, if we just lifted the debt limit, I could see even that leading to a, a downgrade. Because, again, interest payments are going to be bigger than defense payments this year. It's it's an enormous challenge Stunning. to get to fix a, a pol fiscal policy problem like that. Kevin Hassan, great seeing you again, my friend. Kevin Hassan, the former economic advisor. Good to see you. Uh, to President Trump.